are looking for inspiration, but it also has a way of ambushing us, sometimes with a memory from years earlier. We don't know exactly what triggered a nostalgic moment for Mela's resident foodie when she was preparing this week's Mela menu, but we can promise that the results are oh so delicious. Today I'm taking inspiration from my childhood in Durban. I grew up in Isafingo Beach and one of the most fun things I did over the weekend was go fishing with my granddad. I had my own fishing rod and sometimes I would even catch a fish. Today I'm going to be making a Durban fish curry and to go along with that, soji balls. Now, the ingredients for the fish curry are sunflower oil, chopped onions, green chilies, tamarind, red chili powder, we've got mustard seeds, cumin seeds, ground coriander, ground cumin, ginger and garlic, We've got some fresh curry leaves, got the lionfish tomato and fresh coriander to garnish. Now to balance the flavours in that sauce, we're going to add a touch of sugar as well. I'm going to season with salt. For the soji balls, the ingredients are semolina, sesame seeds, desiccated coconut. We've got some sugar, water, milk, butter ghee and some pistachios as well. Now to flavour that, we're going to use some freshly ground cardamom as well. I'm going to start out with the soji balls first. First ingredient going into the pan. Semolina and then sesame seeds. I'm going to cook this over a low heat and just toast the semolina with those sesame seeds. Now, while that's going, I'm going to pop the water into a pot and then in goes the sugar. It's half a cup of water with three quarter cup sugar. Now, let's dissolve the sugar and water. And let's pop this on a medium heat and cook this until the syrup coats the back of a spoon. Now, getting back to the semolina and the sesame seeds. The idea here is to get it a shade or two darker in color. When I was a kid, I'd often go visiting with my mum in the hope of finding a soji bowl along the way and it just kept me really keen. I'm going to add some desiccated coconut. I just keep stirring and keep an eye on it. It does burn quite easily. It goes from light to dark in an absolute flash. And in goes the butter ghee. And just keep stirring until the soji darkens another shade. Now, for the syrup, Always dissolve the sugar before it comes up to the boil or the sugar syrup will just crystallize and it won't really work to bind the soji balls. This is when you actually have to multitask and watch the soji and watch the syrup at the same time as well. Now to check the syrup, just use the back of a spoon, let it cool down slightly and just touch it with your fingertips. It should be sticky. Now remove that from the heat. And this is where you need to be a bit careful. Scoop some of that mixture into the sugar syrup and use a whisk and work that through. Just a little at a time. Semolina can get quite lumpy when it's added to liquid. Again, just a little bit. This starts to get quite thick and tends to harden up quite easily. The last little bit going in. And you can see the mixture starts to look quite crumbly. Now I remember being a lot younger and assisting an older lady make these and I just couldn't get them to stick together. So my version in this recipe is to add a little milk to the semolina to bind it. In goes the milk and stir the milk through. It does look quite lumpy at the moment, but we're gonna use the back of a wooden spoon and mash up those lumps as well. Put the heat up and let's cook this until the semolina starts to leave the sides of the pan and form a ball. The last ingredient going into the soji mixture, some cardamom. I love the flavor, so about a teaspoon going in. This is freshly ground cardamom. It is the best one to use. Leave the semolina aside to cool. Time for a quick cleanup, and then it's the Durban fish curry. First ingredient going into the pan, some oil. Swirl that around. Then 
mustard seeds. I'm going to fry this until they start to splatter. And once they pop, they release a lovely nutty flavour. In goes some cumin seeds. And as soon as they begin to sizzle, add the chopped onion. These are really finely chopped onions. Once they're fried until they're golden brown, they dissolve into the sauce and you get quite a smooth sauce as well. Now, salt going in. This speeds up the browning. About a teaspoon and a half. Some curry leaves going in as well. This is a traditional South Indian style curry. I call it a Durban curry because whether you are South Indian or not, it was quite popular all over Durban. In the meantime, let's crush some ginger and garlic. Some coins of ginger going in. And then garlic. I love lots of fresh garlic in a fish curry. Stamp the garlic with some ginger. Add some salt to this ginger and garlic. And salt crystals actually help break down the garlic. Now let's check on those onions. My onions are ready. They're golden brown, they're crispy. Now in goes that lovely ginger and garlic paste. Always going in on the side of the pan. We don't want our garlic to burn. Chilies going in. Now always remember this used to be one of the most fiery curries from my childhood. We ate it, we loved it, we burnt, and we asked for more. Red chilli powder, two tablespoons going in. In goes the tomatoes. Give that a stir. Next, cumin and coriander going in. That's the cumin, coriander, and some turmeric. Now use the back of a wooden spoon to break down those lumps and help those tomatoes along. Just remember, the riper the tomato, the better the flavour in your curry. One of the most important ingredients in a Durban fish curry is tamarind. Now always add tamarind when your tomatoes are properly cooked down. If you add them too early, your tomatoes won't soften and form that lovely sauce. So we're ready for the tamarind. Two tablespoons of tamarind dissolved in some water. Use your fingertips and just mash that around. Pour that into the sauce. Now, boiling water going into the pan. As soon as the sauce comes up to the boil, let's pop the fish steaks into the sauce. Shake the pan, lower the heat. We're going to simmer these fish steaks on a low heat and poach them in this lovely tamarind sauce. I'd say it would take about 10 minutes. While that's simmering, I'm going to clean up and finish up on those soji balls. Use a little batter ghee just to grease your palms. And then just take little bits of it and roll it into balls. Now you can use almonds in this. I quite like the flavor of a pistachio. On to the last one. Pistachio going on top now. Let's check on our fish curry. That looks absolutely delicious, just the way I remember it from my childhood. I'm sure my mom's gonna be really proud of me. Now swirl the pan around. Don't stir the fish. You don't want to break up those delicate fish steaks. Now, finishing touches going on, some curry leaves going on top. I like adding a few at the end as well. It does have a lovely aroma. And next, some coriander. Just gonna use a pair of scissors to snip this in. Storks have the most flavor, so don't throw them out. Always use them up. My fish curry is now done. What a lovely trip it's been down memory lane to my Durban days, fishing with my granddad in the Spingo Beach. Speedboats, sun, sand, and lovely memories.